My name is Erica Miller, and I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My name is Ariella Rosen, and I'm originally from West Hartford, Connecticut. Um, I'm Sarit Horowitz, and I'm from Kansas City. And what happened to you ladies today? Why did you decide to come to Women of the Wall and tell us your story? I decided to come to Women of the Wall because I am a conservative rabbinical student studying in Israel. And this is the minion that suits us. This is the minion that speaks for us. And this is the minion that speaks for women that want to move upwardly throughout the entire world and be able to daven at the Kotel in comfort and as they'd like to do. Um, I came to Women of the Wall because I also, as a conservative rabbinical student, feel like a lot of places in Israel don't belong to me um, in terms of religious spaces. And I wanted to feel like I could be at the Kotel and, and pray there and feel comfortable and doing so with the Women of the Wall, as of right now, is the only way I feel like I can do that. Um, davening with Women of the Wall is the only way that I've felt comfortable davening at the Kotel. And so I've tried to be here at the opportunities that I can. And what happened today, ladies? <laughs> this morning we received a very interesting lesson in garments and the difference between a scarf and a talus and how that works with different gender identities and the, the very short version of what happened is we were instructed uh, to wear our talisim as a scarf and we did just that but upon exit of the Kotel Plaza there was further inquiry as to the choice of how we wear our garments. So what happened in my specific case is, after having been there for a while, one of the, the police officers came over and asked me to take my tallit down and wear it like a scarf. And I just gathered my tzitzit for the uh, Shema. So I pulled down the shoulder so it was draped down and, and she said that wasn't good enough. And I started to explain that as soon as the Shema's over, I'll fix it. And, um, and she said that was no good. Um, she said, you know, she, she didn't even hear the answer. So um, as soon as the Shema was over, I fixed my tallit, but I guess that wasn't good enough. And as we, as we walked out from the Kotel and we're marching um, over here to Robinson's Arch, um, the, some of the police officers came and took the three of us and pulled us to the side and asked for our um, two dots of hoot um, or our passport. Neither of us had either of those. Um, and he took our IDs and wrote down our information and our phone numbers and our address and told us that we would be, um, that we were being detained and that we were, would be called in for further investigation and questioning. And why do you think Women of the Wall's mission is important and other people should join or even plan their trips around it to come to Israel during Rosh Chodesh? As a, a very wise colleague of mine once taught us, uh, the lenient opinion is still a very valid opinion. There, there are groups of people and we often err towards the more strict opinion. But if we continue doing that, there will never be a voice for the lenient opinion. And so wherever you fall along the spectrum of halakha, or however you relate to halakha, you should be able to express yourself. And one of the things that Ariella said before of um, coming here feeling like this space was her own, um, I think it's important that holy spaces in Israel aren't just for a certain group of people and that we can also feel like this space is ours. And um, without Women of the Wall, there's not the framework to do that. And I think to an extent, Women of the Wall, takes us back to our original roots here too. Um, until recent years, anyone could be in the Kotel in any space, in a mixed space, praying how they wanted. And um, it's something that we've been able to continue to embrace in the States, and that's been more of a challenge here. So I think it's important that we show that this kind of, of religious experience is still alive.